Have you always lived in Franklin County? Okay. And um, how long have you lived here? Uh, 44 years, 11 months. And how, <laughs> tell me how your family ended up here. Um, they came here in 1854 through the, the Western Land Grants. They basically used them as um, hired pit men to take the Indians out of this area. Okay. <laughs> that's basically what all the settlers yeah. did there. I mean, but this was the Western much, Frontier at that yeah. time. So, uh, yeah. they, they actually give them the land and they come from, they started out in South Carolina and they came here with the free land grant promise. And they said, oh, by the way, there's a lot of Indians there. We probably need to watch out for those. Yeah. No, yeah, that's how, that's how it was. That's interesting. Um, where do you know where your family's from originally? Like I do. Yeah. 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 Um, they're from the Highlands of Scot Scotland. They moved to Ireland for a brief period, and then 1767 they came over here. That's so um, interesting. There's a ship roster that that has my family's name on it. Now it's not the original; it's a type version. I can't say it's 100 percent authentic, but it's that's always believed to have been the the one they came over. With. And it, it's tied to their original land grant um, down in the 96th district of, of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So they, they actually have a founder's deed in South Carolina. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Sure do. Wow. You can Google all that when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you tell me um, why, what type of home do you live in? Um, it's... Is it single family or yeah, um, yeah, trailer? Yeah, single family. Single family? Single, fam single family. It is three different levels, um, but yeah, it's a regular house. Yeah. Have you been in the house a while? Uh, Ten years. Oh, nice. Uh, we live in a um, like a 1950s ranch. Yeah. And my um, husband, it's just me and my husband, and he always just like complains about the space because it's, it's, you know, they just didn't build houses like they do now. And I, I tell him all the time, like, a family used to live in this house, I'm sure. Like, a family of five used to live in this house easily. <laughs> my wife. I, I, I've always been kind of a minimalist kind of guy, except for most shoppers. But we had a, uh, a single wide trailer. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I don't know, probably 1,100 square foot. I was able to pay for it. You know, didn't have a bill in the world. Then I get married to her. She had children and I had a child. So we all, there's five of us in a single wide trailer. And uh, she grabbed every day about, this thing's too small. I don't have enough room. It's a cracker box. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I built this house, my house is like 40, 4,200 square feet, three different levels, and now she's saying, this house is so damn big, we need to downsize. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then you got to clean that much. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a mess. That's funny. Um, all right. Have you invested in solar, either on the roof of rooftop of your home, on your property, or as part of your business, or as part of a program through your utility company? No, uh, not not outside of you know just regular mutual fund stuff that I have not you know it's managed mm -hmm. funds, but mm -hmm. no, I have not. Okay. Individually. Tell me why you do not have rooftop solar. Um, the cost of it is high. Fundamentally, I don't think it's a real good contributor to the grid. Uh, it's not. It's not very efficient, and and the cost, of course, mm -hmm. is prohibitive too. I, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't spend that much money for something I don't think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um. And did you make that decision personally, or did somebody influence or make that decision for you? I probably don't know one human being that knows anything about solar, so I, I've researched it myself. And, you know, I've read both sides of the argument, the pros and cons. And, um, it, it's, you know, solar is much like the other energy forms. They, they compare their best production with the other forms' worst production. So, you know, a lot of the numbers they come up with is kind of skewed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, plus, they still haven't gotten over the thing about when the sun goes away at night. You know, you only, you only have production for 
maybe three quarters of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, I mean, I just don't think it's a real good idea. It's it's great for charging batteries. You got a cabin somewhere and you got a battery bank, but just to hook up to the grid, I mean, and there's no benefit to me for, you know, the whole net metering thing. As far as I know, it's still not a, not a law in Georgia that I can, I can recoup those costs. So, you know, that's one of the seven points of nuclear, especially in the Carolinas, is, you know, you get 5 to 15 percent return every year, depending on, you know, energy prices in your area. So, if you can't recoup that, then what good is it? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's just extra cost. Right. And, we're already making enough power. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So you said the laws are different in South... Earlier you said the laws are different in South Carolina. They're, the laws are different, really different from state to state. And uh -huh. I couldn't quote them, but I do know net metering is a general term that they use for the consumer with the, the panel being able to recoup some of the cost. Of, you know, the power... He's, he's actually selling to the utility. And the... The utilities don't like that at all, by the way, because you get a lot of folks selling, they're cutting into their profit, and they're cutting into their profit at the peak of the day when they have everything running. So, you know, they have all these base load plants, and, and they're all running, and these folks in these neighborhoods are cutting into their profit, selling their energy back to them. And they have no skin in the game where the utilities got all this wire. They, got, they have regulatory requirements where they have to provide so much energy. And they don't know what's coming off these rooftops every day. So they have to act like they're not there, basically. Mm -hmm. So they, they have a lot of money tied up in you know, gas units and base or peak load production type things like a gas unit you can turn on and off versus mm -hmm. you know, a nuclear plant that runs 24-7 mm -hmm. and it's a base load. But they, they have to spend a lot for peak because the consumers, they, they are unpredictable. The utility has no control over it. If it's sunny at their house and they're making power, with, you know, they catch it on their grid, but they can't really account for it. You know, so it's, there, there needs to be a lot more work done on the laws to be a little bit more fair to the utilities. And the utilities are making money hand over fist, you know, but, but still the coordination of all that needs to be worked out. And it definitely needs to be where the consumer gets get something out of mm -hmm. it. You know, I mean, he needs to, he needs to make something out of it um, if he's making the investment. So, it, you know, I don't have an answer for it. They don't have an answer for it. So, it's it's a mess, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a Georgia way of simplifying it. Yeah. It's a damn mess. Yeah. yeah. If you had the option, would you put rooftop on your solar home? Read that again. If you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? Uh, I thought you said on your solar home. <laughs> okay. um, you know, it's it would be it would be a fun novelty item if if I had a battery bank system, maybe something I could store my power. But just to put it on there, you know, the systems they have now are really not using batteries that much, or shooting it straight to the grid, or consuming it in the house or the other, and you know. I, I probably I would you know, I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> not this is not practical. It's just not practical. And it's ugly too. <laughs> it's terribly ugly. So. The ones on the roof, especially or the ones yes. in the yard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ones on the roof just look like you put something on your roof. It don't you know, it's not integral an integral part of the, of the roof. So. Yeah, I wouldn't want that on my house. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, I've seen some that blend in, and I've seen some that, that don't blend in at all. So, and it's well, you know, I think there's different types of construction that you can do, but just a retrofit is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. Here's a map of the United States. Where do you think people adopt or invest in the most solar? And you can circle it. Adopt or invest? Mm -hmm. um, I'm adopt or invest. I'm going to say California. I don't know about adoption or investment 
but I would say California. And the last I checked, Georgia was still beating Florida in the solar production. They were like number, we were number eight, they were number seven. Okay. But I don't know about, I have no idea about the individual. Uh, investment. I would assume California because they, I think they're producing something like 22,000 megawatts or something. It's a lot. So. Okay. So just California? That's, we're good with that? Do you, oh, want, do you want to circle anything else? On no, 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 no. Okay. Um, what, what makes that community so different from people in the, your community? So what makes the people in California different from the people in Carnesville? Um, well, the, the parts of California where they're most successful, rooftop and solar in general, is, is the areas of, uh, you know, deserts and high sun area where we don't have it much sun. I mean, we have a lot of sun here in the summertime, yeah, but, you know, per capita, we probably have a little less than they do in California. But, I mean, we still have enough that we're, we're ranked pretty high on our production. We're, like I said, seventh or eighth. So, um, I, I would say, you know, the amount of sunshine and, and humidity, that affects solar also. Because it's okay. like a, you know, it kind of cuts, cuts down on the uh, amount of energy shooting through all the little water droplets. So they have less humidity, and that, that makes it a little more efficient. So, I, you know. That's what I would guess. Okay. So it kind of answered my question. Why do you think people here have the most solar on the rooftops? Pretty much the weather is what, yeah. You know. the weather. And, and I think they have a, I think they have a perception there that that's a very eco-friendly, the solar industry spent a lot of money out there in the, in the western states on, you know, I guess making their, their product look like a, environmental savior and you know it's it's not but, mm-hmm. but i think they've done a good job marketing that. here probably not so much yeah people are a little more skeptical on these coast, you know yeah but yeah i could i know it's your I, they're a little more skeptical in georgia <laughs> <laughs> i know they're very skeptical of me asking if they want to be recorded all right we're going to do the same thing with georgia in what community do you think people have adopted the most solar? And you can circle it the same way. And you can circle more than one. You can go to town on it. This is a straight up guess. Yeah. Um, I think it's hard not seeing the county names. <laughs> <laughs> um, Especially this. You know, I would, I would guess somewhere in this area would be the sunny area of Georgia, I wouldn't think that would be, but, you know, if it, it, so is it rooftop? It's rooftop. Um, people have invested. Rooftop, like, yeah, rooftop so okay. great. Um, that changes it. I'm going to go with these idiots here. They'll buy anything. <laughs> That's Fulton County. Okay, the Atlanta area. <laughs> And um, what makes that county so much more different from people in your county? Well, I think the biggest the biggest difference is probably their political political um, affiliation, you know, the whole conservative versus liberal thing. But even bigger than that, I think. The, the major, probably the majority of these folks in this county are like two generations max. But, you know, my folks came here and we've been here forever. So, you know, we were here before this in America. So, um, that, that's probably the primary difference yep. um, in, in the kind of people that we have and the, the slants or affiliations we have. Solar has spent a lot of money trying to make their product be a social hero and and that's that's a smart approach but you know it's also not a true approach there's there's a downside to it and they don't they don't talk about it of course. And, and most people don't know about it most people don't know the downside of solar and i'm i'm just not a fan of the industry but, um, like i said it's a good novelty item it's just not an answer to any 
any energy question that we have. I don't, I don't feel like. I mean, yeah. that's my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah, no, that's all. <laughs> um, so besides people kind of being second generation, you know, not really long established in these counties, what what kind of people live in these communities? What kind of people live in these communities that are adopting? Solar? Yeah, the rooftop solar. Um, I don't know. I, you said I, they would adopt anything, or you said they tend well, to easily, you that know. Was, that was kind of a joke. Kind of oh, a joke. well. <laughs> I, I, think those, I think the folks in, in those counties around the Atlanta area and around all larger areas in Georgia are probably a little more... They, they like to be a little... Not like to be, but they are a little more liberally minded, and I think they look for the up and coming social trends and solutions. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think so. Is mm -hmm. so, you know, they're not nothing bad about these yeah. folks. It's just, you know, you get you got seven generations of cow farmers out here, they think a little bit different. And when a guy comes up saying, save the environment, he's like, there ain't nothing wrong with it. You know? Right, right. He, it's, it's a different set of thoughts and problems. Yeah, I think. yeah. Different occupation or, you know. Different different perspectives on the world, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's, probably, that's probably the biggest difference. But. As far as the kinds of people, we're still on the kinds of people. I got lost here for a moment. So. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about most of your friends or family? Do any of them have solar? Um, no. Some some have used it, you know, like in electrified fencing for cattle and stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll use it to charge batteries, you know, on a very small scale, but. As far as rooftop or, you know, using it for home use, uh, uh, I don't know many folks who have, but mm -hmm. it is true. I mean, yeah. you know, can or not. Yeah. Um, I know, I, I probably know two houses in this county that have them, so um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not a, not a priority here. Yeah. Plus, you know, we, we have pretty good energy production in here, too. We have a lot of energy being produced here, so we don't have to look for you know options like you have to look for in the desert. Right. The desert's a good place, if so it's probably a good, good idea, but not so much here. Yeah. Um, so when you were talking about this part of Georgia, was it just like solar, other solar, like on the ground and stuff, that versus rooftop? Um, I do know that the Georgia legislature, actually the, the PSC, Public Service Commission, has had some arguments with Georgia Power and has mandated that they throw some solar into their mix. So most counties in Georgia have at least one solar farm. Uh, this one has one just right, up, right over the in road. In Livonia, or right up here. Yeah, it's yeah. one. If I heard about it. There's not an exit down to the next bridge uh -huh. down, right there in that area. It, it's there. But that's from Georgia Power is actually been mandated. And I don't know, but I heard it was a kind of a personal thing between the CEO and the head of the PSC, Bob McDonald, at the time. Mm -hmm. But um, they had. They had a little, a little riff, and um, there's a lot of political fallout over the nuclear plants in Georgia. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of cost overruns, which was predictable. Um, they had never built one before since you know, 1984 was the last one to come online. So, <clears throat> you know, there, there was a lot of unknowns there going in, and the political guys allied themselves with the folks telling them the story of how much it was going to cost mm -hmm. and they've, they've allowed them to charge the consumers in Georgia and that's how solar got a, a foothold it's, it's almost punishment for the for utility <laughs> that's exactly what it is it's punishment for the utility 
utilities hands off, they're not running it. They got a company, I think it runs. I think they may actually have two. I've heard they have two separate solar okay. subsidiaries. Probably somebody's brother-in-law somewhere <laughs> that runs these things. And, so yeah. solar's got a lot of uh, there's a lot of political nuances with solar. That's another reason I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Something that has to have that much subsidy mm -hmm. can't be used. Interesting. Yeah. Energy should. You know, it should stand on its own. It shouldn't have to have the amount of subsidy and marketing that it has. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a lot of, um, just from where you work, the marketing, or like what you see where you live? Is it just, or just your common, just from working in your field? Um, no, actually, I don't deal with solar that much. Um, I won't speak on my company's perspective on right. it, but it has changed from it's done that so many years. Um, personally, I have seen a lot of efforts, you know, even even nationally, you know, Google Solar and see what you come up with. You know, it's they put a lot of effort into those websites. So when you when you Google it, you come up with good, positive, pretty things. You know, solar's, solar's good for the environment. It's, it's saving, the, saving the environment for our children. So, you know, when I had to try that hard, I, I just do, I think it's a scam. And I really do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, like yeah. I say, it's a novelty item. It, it's it's definitely something that will produce power. But, you know, you get 15 watts per square foot. So, you know, a solar panel the size of Georgia will produce what our nuclear plants produce over there. You know, it's not, uh, it's not a viable option for making real, real power. And I don't think it ever will be. I, I think we're bark, barking up the wrong tree. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm not real, I'm not militant about it. But <laughs> well, I mean, but I think it's as, interesting. You, know, it's just you have an interesting perspective because of what, where you live, for, you know, what you do in your, in your field. I think that's really interesting. So. A lot of political stuff. Yeah. Um, I won't speak about that. <laughs> After we get finished. On the record. <laughs> yeah. So well, I think you're still recording. Um, oh, me. Um, so um, define characteristics of why, like, your friends and family haven't adopted the group of people. Like, we talked about the last question was, you know, do any of your friends or family adopt? And what characteristics about them why aren't they adopting, per se? Honestly, people in this community, and I have a lot of family and friends, the socioeconomic conditions are such that they do real good to get the power bills paid. You know, much less putting something on the roof that's, uh, that's going to help the environment and nothing else. It's not going to help them out. So, you know, if there was, if there's a definite benefit for them. Uh, and... It, it could be that they have some type of net metering system. Now, I don't know. Last I heard, they did. You know, um, so I, I I couldn't imagine. You know, I I have some pretty close family who, are, you know, they don't they don't have a lot. I, I didn't have a lot. I came from nothing. So you know, all the folks in my area, they're not they're not going to be putting pretty solar panels. I think most rural counties in Georgia have that same issue. They're, they're worried about keeping the lights turned on. They don't care how, what makes the, the electricity that causes it to flow, you know? Right. So, you know, they, they would definitely have to get some kind of serious subsidy in place to get people around here to put those things on the rooftop. Not, you know, cost is one thing. Then they're going to look and say, damn, that's ugly. And I, you know, I'm, I barely make that house payment. Why am I going to put something ugly on my roof? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's yeah, I know. That makes again. sense. Yeah. <laughs> you spend so much, you know, of your time trying to pay your, buy your home, you know. Oh, yeah. Most, most yeah. your life, you're yeah. trying to just afford how to live. So, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, you know, you read, you read some of the advertisements and they talk about how it actually helps your roof. And solar, solar has some marketing folks who, they, they hit it hard. <laughs> I have to pay attention to that. I haven't, haven't noticed, like, I just haven't 
researched a lot into it. Um, that's interesting. It's, it's an interesting little read to go out there one day. And you know, like I say, when you read that kind of stuff, it sounds really good. But you know, you think about they say they save like eight pounds of a solar panel saves like eight pounds of pollutants into the air every. I forget how many megawatts, but nobody really makes energy with coal anymore. And that's the only thing that makes that much. You know, South Carolina and North Carolina both have their coal plants shut down. I think, I think we do actually have one in North Carolina we're still running, but okay. South Carolina has no, no coal plants. Uh, Duke shut all those down. And, uh, you know, people don't make energy that way. Nuclear power makes zero emissions. So, you know, a lot of that solar stuff, you gotta, you gotta take them around and solve. Yeah, what I have found with some people is that some people don't want to talk to me because they don't know anything about solar, and that's just as valuable information that I think is, needs well, to be collected, too, those, you know? Those really are probably the people you need to talk to, the ones that don't. I formed an opinion 15 years ago, you know, I, I'm probably. I, I try to be non-biased, but you know, I'm probably I'm probably biased towards certain forms of energy. Oh yeah. And you know, I'm probably not the best guy for a survey, but the people who don't know is the ones that you really, you know, that perception of where would you? I mean, you know, I know California produces 22,500 megawatts of solar power, and so nobody else in the world remembers that stupid fact. <laughs> Well, no, it's either, yeah, I think even, I just appreciate it because I think even what you're even saying is important to have them know, too, because, I mean, you clearly live in this county, and I'm sure people come to you about power questions, you know, and, you know, that that's, uh, makes a difference. And Everybody likes to hear about nuclear and be blue <laughs> when you pee, and I get all those kind of questions. <laughs> I always say I hope so because that pays more. <laughs>